Thou my everlasting Stim portion, more the friend of life to me. All along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, all along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk turn now to sing and um, brother Mike Wulabi will be our song leader but before then we want to welcome everyone to the house of God we're happy to see you all here today and also we welcome our internet audience those that have joined us from wherever they are located we believe that the Lord will bless you even as you join us in our worship today we want to say a big thank you to God for his presence here and also to thank uh, um, choir this the first gave us um, after the Organ voluntary by Bro Mike. The choir sang, "O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness," and then we had a beautiful um, duet, "The Close to Thee" by Sister Florence and Brother Shem. When we sing, hopefully we can match their voices. God bless you all. Let's begin with number six hundred and sixty-four, our collected gospel song, six six four. Our hearts are full of joy today. Amen. We have found the golden way. We thank God for this golden way. And we want to sing <coughs> three verses on this number. <coughs> Excuse me. One, two, and three. And then more other numbers will come. Six, six, four, after the tune from the organist. <coughs>
come before prayer will be 684. We'll take um, the first fast, sitting down, and the third fast, we'll stand up to sing. And the chorus of the third fast is going to be without musical background, a cappella. So verses one and three is what we are singing. The last fast, we'll stand up to sing, and at the chorus, there'll be no uh, musical support. We listen from the organist and we sing heartily. thank you because you are a shield and you are a buckler. You've done this not only to the little ones, even to the youths of this church, even to the elderly. Lord, we bow before you with incense of humbleness to glorify your name for your love, for your mercy, for your grace all over our lives. Lord, for this we say glory be unto your name. Thank you, O oh Lord, for gathering us into your presence where there is fullness of joy. Thank you because we have not gathered here as a routine, but we have come to worship you in spirit and in truth because we know that in your presence we can find deliverance because we know in your presence we can find healing because we know in your presence we can find solutions to those challenges in our lives, in our families, in our environments. Lord, glory be unto your name. But Lord, we just want to come closer, be drawn closer to you. And that's why we are here again. And we pray, O oh Lord, even this day, that through your word, O oh Lord, you will speak to us 
those words of life, those words that will bind us to you. Lord, we pray for your special anointing upon your servant today. Lord, anoint your servant, O oh God, that the words that will come forth will meet us at our very points of need. Lord, we remember those that are not here due to sickness or one problem or the other, that even as the word will bless us, that it will bless them in their sick bed, in their homes. It will reach them, even to those, oh Lord, watching through the internet, that even right now, oh God, all their problems, all their difficulties, Lord, you will release your mercy, your grace. Serve them all, oh God, that at the end of this day, we shall declare as David, we, we are glad, we are glad to be in your house. Thank you, oh Lord, for answering, for we pray in Jesus' name. scripture reading this morning. We'll be taking this from the book of Leviticus chapter 17 from verse 11 to 14. Verse 11. 
For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Amen. Twelve, therefore I said unto you, the children of Israel, no soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. Thirteen, and who and whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, which hunted and catcheth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. 14, the last verse. For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. There is no problem too big, God cannot solve it. There is no mountain too tall, He cannot move it. There is no storm too dark, God cannot come in. There is no sorrow to deep, he cannot move it. If he carried the loss of the world upon his shoulder, I know my brother that he will come. no problem too big, God cannot solve it. Mm, there is no mountain too tall that he cannot move it. Mm, there is no storm to deck, God cannot come. There is no sorrow too deep, he cannot soothe it. If he carried the weight of this world upon his shoulder, I know my brother that he will carry you.
the text that we read during the Sunday school, that is Deuteronomy chapter 12, please. I read verse 16. Only ye shall not eat the blood, ye shall pour it upon the earth as water. Verse 23. Only be sure that thou eat not the blood, for the blood is the life, and thou mayest not eat the life with the flesh. 24. That thou shalt not eat it, thou shalt pour it upon the earth as water. Thou shalt not eat it, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, when thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. just want to talk about the living blood this morning. Here we see God gave us specific instructions to the children of Israel. God was telling them not to joke with blood in a precise way. And God wanted to put a demarcation because um, everything in life has blood. Every creeping thing, but what God wanted to put a demarcation on where the powers that he has given to us should, should start and where it ends. And also, God let us know, Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. God was pointing out very clearly that blood is for one purpose, for remission of sins. And we would remember that when we studied the tabernacles, we remember the golden altar when all of anyone that felt the guilt of sin had to bring an animal and will be on the queue until that animal is slaughtered for the remission of his own sins, for the forgiveness of that which he has gone wrong. So this we know was all pointing out, pointing to the very and most powerful blood of Jesus Christ yes. for the remission of our sins once. Because as Paul admonished that if those goods, the blood of those goods were powerful, there would have been no need for the one of Jesus Christ to come. And when I was given this assignment, we had this strand of the blood in our Sunday school that I just felt that God was very clear and instructive that we must not joke with blood. Amen. And it's also a warning to those who feel that they may have secret powers that can tamper with the blood of the children of God that they are, they are complete failures. Amen. Because that is the word of God. Amen. And it's also when I was given this assignment, I, I just decided to read a little bit about why do we have blood in our system. And I discovered very many things after, um, on going, to, going back to my biology class, that blood is the fun, fundamental to the function of every cell, of every component in our bodies. So every pigment that we cut out in our body has so many cells. And those cells cannot function without blood. As 
powerful as this may be, you have to remember that once we pass on, if any of us or the blood is drained from our system, we are finished. But at the same time, as good as it is, when that blood also, God gives, calls us and gives us the last breath. And that blood ceases to function. You are finished. And that you are forgotten, finished. You are dead. And once we die, that blood has no more, no more power. It cannot, it couldn't save you. It couldn't make you a better person. It was only an engine that God gives for every single living man so, and woman so that they can have life in this. But you know, also, as blood is fundamental to the function of every cell, there is a Bible that tells us the word of God, explains the word of God, and wants us to follow the word of God, gives us the induction, the, the all we need to know. If we open to Genesis, no, Exodus chapter 12, I will read verse 13. God clearly told the children of Israel as they were preparing to exit at the Passover and every in verse 18, and every fastling of an ass thou shalt redeem with, the, with a lamb. And if thou wilt not redeem it, then shalt thou break the neck, his neck, and all the firstborn of man among thy children um, shall, shall redeem. Sorry, I want to read verse 12, 13. I'm reading 13, 12 instead. I am chapter 12, verse 13. For I shall pass, sorry, 12 verse 13, sorry, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where you are. And, I shall, and when I shall see the blood, I will pass over you. Yeah. And the plague shall not be upon you yeah. to destroy you. Yeah. When I smite the land of Egypt. What I wanted to bring out there is that blood is also a mark of identity for every Christian. God told the children of Israel to kill the animal, take the blood, and go to the lintel and paste it. That when God will send the dead angel, he will be able to identify the heart that belongs to his own. And from that, from then onward, God wanted to reveal himself in a mighty way. So it is important that we recognize how the blood plays a big part in our Christian life, the blood of Jesus. Amen. And I looked also at 1 John chapter 1. Verse 7, but if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. When I looked at the function of the blood in the system, our blood also has the cleansing function. If we didn't sleep, if the 
blood did not do its own work of cleansing, we will not wake up the following day. But when we, when, when, when we have worked and worked and overworked and overworked and overworked and come back to bed and sleep, the blood then cleans the cells. The dead ones are removed. And the lively ones are, 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 are engineered. And then you wake up fresh. And you feel, ah, it's a different world compared with the way you went to bed. But you know, the blood of Jesus does that. Yes. It's a cleansing spirit. Yes. It cleanses from inside out yes. of every single trace of sin Amen. and makes us to be good before God. Amen. Because God has given the blood as for the remission of sin, I decided to check what is the meaning of remission. And I can see the cancellation of a date or charge or penalty. So it means the blood of Jesus cancels all our debts. Amen. You know, when you, when you think of it, you just concentrate on the spiritual debt. Don't forget, it has the power to cancel the physical debt as well. It has no limit. When it is, if it cleanses the inside, your outside will be better. Your emotions will be different. Yes. And that is what God was telling the children of Israel know that it is a very important part of the animal as well as our, our living. And therefore, they should not joke with it. And I also understood that the cells need food to survive. That it is cells in our body needs food to survive, yeah. to grow, to repair themselves, yeah. and fulf to fulfill some specific functions, yeah. and to reproduce. Yeah. And therefore, the cellular food is transported in the blood to provide energy for all the cells' needs. Yeah. So it means that our, the cells in our body need food. And he needs that food to survive, like everyone does. He yeah. needs food to grow. He needs food to repair itself. Mm -hmm. And needs food to fulfill other specific functions. Mm -hmm. If the blood, if there is no blood in your body, it means there is no, the, the blood is the vehicle. You see, you want to travel from here, maybe to Bromley, or maybe you want to travel from here, maybe to Hackney, and you, you enter a vehicle, and it takes you there. You see that the blood in the system does that job. Is this the, fun the transport function that transports from the heart to other vessels, from the other vessels, pumping the heart and making sure that we live. See, sometimes if we want to go into the biology of how things happen in this world, we, you, 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 begin, you, you can be confused. Yeah. And you, you, you put on a little child, it's the same processes that a grown-up giant has, that that little one has. Yeah. And it, it contains within, within that. And that, that just gives us um, the reason to fear God. Yeah. How it just makes, it makes things like this and no man can fight them out. Come, you, you just... People talk about cloning, people talk about this, people talk about that, they have never brought one that lives. I heard about cloning, I think they were long many years ago about Dolly the sheep. I wonder where it is now. So I say, yeah. So that is what the body, do, the body does to the human body. The blood does to the human body. Even if you don't even have to sleep. When you are tired, you exclaim the blood of Jesus. Oh, yes. And you see the energy come back to you. Yes. You feel refreshed. Yes. And you wake up. Yes. You say, ah. And then you begin to walk again. Yes. And then you are tired and you go back the blood of Jesus. Yes. It shows the unlimited power yes. of the blood of Jesus Christ. 
And, and the truth of the matter is that it's free for you Amen. and it's free for me. Amen. It is our privilege. Amen. It doesn't matter the number of times. I'm sure if you call me that many times, I will say, why don't you go and sleep? Because, I mean, if you sleep and wake up, you'll be fresh. Stop calling me. Because humanly, I will be tired. Yes. But the blood of Jesus is never tired. Yes. It's there for us 24 hours of the day. You could sleep and wake up with a bad dream, and you plead the blood of Jesus. Yes. It takes it away. Yes. It is such a strong privilege. Yes. And that is why the psalmist in Psalm 51 said, Psalm 51, probably you don't have to read. He said, cleanse me and I shall be clean. Yes. He said, wash me and I shall be washed. Yes. He said that he should wash him with his up yes. and he shall be whiter than snow. Yes. And what is a hyssop? It's a plant. And that plant, when it grows, it grows like a brush. You remember that brushes were not easily available in the ancient days when the Bible was written. But hyssop had grown. And it's like you want to paint the house, you get a brush so that everything, when you paint it, just goes the same color and everything is touched within the areas that you are painting. Hesop is that plant. It grows like that, like a brush. And the psalmist said that God should take the hesop and dip in the blood and wash him. Amen. And that when he washes him, he shall be clean. Amen. You see, for us today, you need water. Yes. But you realize that the blood of Jesus is powerful than water. Yes. And it will look funny if any of us is painted with the blood. And then we walk out and see people will, will, will see you and run. But ah, why is that one so bloody? But it wasn't meant to be so. Mm -hmm. it's, the psalmist meant it in the spirit. Yes. It's like, okay, the way I will paint my house, I want you to use his up, oh Lord, and, and use the blood to wash me through so that no gap is left. Yes. If you take that analogy and then go to the when Jesus now has shed his blood, you know, a tiny little bit that drops on us fulfills that function. Yes. We don't have to be painted fully. Any drop of the blood of Jesus on the heart cleanses the heart. Any blood on the drop of blood of Jesus on the soul cleanses the soul. And also, for the efficacy, it is so strong, it's so powerful yes. that you don't need a high dose. No. Some people that go on medication, the doctor will say, okay, this one, I'm going to give you a high dose of injection. No. There's nothing like that with the blood of Jesus. You only need a dose. Oh, yes. And once you have that dose, yes. that dose will do the job of, anything, of many things. Yes. It, doesn't ta it doesn't tackle one thing. It tackles matters spiritual. It tackles matters also that is in the flesh. It tackles matters that, is, that you yourself cannot even describe. You can sit here and say the blood of Jesus to your brother Amen. overseas and he catches him. You can stay here and say the blood of Jesus to your sister in another part of the country and he reaches him. That is how powerful it is. It works with the spirit. It works with the soul. It works with power. It works with momentum. It's not something, it doesn't have the laying tactics. It's, okay, set me as a, a stop clock. There is a time that I'm coming to work. No, it's instant. You pronounce it comes through. So it is the privilege of the blood of Jesus. It's the living blood. It's for, for if I die today, I'm finished. But the blood of Jesus continues to prevail. Amen. And God said the, 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 the blood of Abel that cries. Yes. The, the blood of Abel that cries sent, sent Cain mad. Yes. 
was the punishment for his brother because Cain, Cain, Cain slew his brother. But you know, in the same way today, um, it's, the Bible says that we should not fear anything. We should fear the one that can kill the body and the soul together. Yes. So even if someone tempers with you, that the blood, when God says, shed no, when the Bible says shed no blood, it, it means shed no blood. Don't, don't just temper with a child of God. Don't temper with the blood of a child of God. Because when he begins to cry, you will look, you will look somewhere, you will look for one way to stay. And you will not find a cover. Abel did not find a cover. The blood of Cain hunted him down. So, every single soul once we surrender our lives to that blood of Jesus Christ, we find coverage. Amen. We find protection. Amen. That is why in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, wash me, clean my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, was the prayer of Isaiah. Every single soul needs the cleansing of the blood. Yes. Every single soul needs confession through the blood of Jesus to be saved. But if we don't take advantage of it, we deny ourselves what is our right. You know, people like to claim their right. It is my right. But did you also know that kneeling down and in, 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 um, pleading the blood of Jesus is your right. Yes, sir. And God wants us to make good use of it. Yes. I also discovered that as humans are multicellular organisms, having specialized, separate, specialized functions with highly sophisticated system for transport, for communication between these structures, they are essential. See, when you pinch yourself like this, you would thought the pain should remain there. But honestly, the blood carries the pain to everywhere else in your system. So that is why we say that what affects the eyes also affects the nose. You hurt your leg, you wonder why you're having a headache. It should stop there. But the blood carries the function, carries the communication to your brain, and you have a headache. And, the, and then you would say, ah, it's only, I only have a boil on my thigh. But why am I having pain on my other leg? Because the blood sends signals to the brain, saying that there's something wrong here. And that one will send signal to this side and say, you also will be in trouble. But you know, the same way that the Spirit of God works, if we all surrender, to the blood of Jesus oh, yeah. and have a sanctified spirit, a sanctified mind, we will love each other. Yes. The, 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 yes. we, the, we, will, we, will, we will be free. Yes. We communicate freely. Yes. We sympathize free. We, we empathize what is happening to my brother. We empathize with what is happening to my sister. We share. Yes. Because that is the function of the blood of Jesus. Yes. The function of the blood in the system is to communicate, is to transport, is to transfer. If you transfer that to true Christianity, we see now that the blood of Jesus can do so many things to make sure that we are holy and we live a holy life. You and I may from time to time feel the shortage of that blood of Jesus. But when we have these two things called the knees, we can go back. And say, Jesus, pour me with your blood. Pour me with your blood. Pour me with your blood. If we are faithful to it, you will, you will rise up a different person. No one has ever prayed and wake up the same person. It doesn't work. And this is the, that, is the, that is the power that is given in the blood of Jesus. And so when we cry, we remember the blood of Jesus. Yeah, when, when we take our communion, we do, what do we do? We remember the Lord's death. Isn't it? Yes. And say, then, oh, whether we say the death of Jesus, the blood of, what, when Jesus died, is it the death? It's not the death. It's the blood that is shed. Oh, yeah. And that is what we plead in time of trouble and sorrow. Yeah. That we have deliverance. Yes. 
we cannot have such power, such powerful tools, and then we leave it behind. No, it's worthless. They will be worthless for us having been Christians. We know that the blood exists, and God has warned the devil. God has warned Satan, don't joke with it. This is mine, don't joke with it. So we have the right to use it to the, to the maximum. Because God has given it to us. When you want to go on a journey, do you, 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 for me, like, yeah, I don't have mother, I don't have father, I, yeah, I should be in an orphanage, a proper orphan. But do, we, do I plead the blood of my father? Do I plead the blood of my mother? No! no. It's the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Cover this car. Yeah. The blood of Jesus. Oh. Cover the road. Oh. The blood of Jesus. Take us there. Oh. The blood of Jesus. Bring us back. Yeah. Because this is what God has given to us. Yeah. And that is why all of us are sitting down here, because we have pleaded that blood and it has worked. But it is revealing to us also that there is something deeper, more, more to have, more to gain, more to undertake. So, the, the blood also is a coordinating agent. It's a coordinating agent. You see, if the choir didn't, don't, they don't have the blood of Jesus on them, they can't sing. They, they, it will be like, we, let's sing A, and they always know we sing B, and then you let's sing C, and they always know we sing D. There will be no unity. There will be no, no working together. And they will come, and this one will sing this up, and that one will sing down, and that one will sing. So the, when we, then even the congregation will be crumb, it will be going like, like a throat. And nothing will work. But because the blood of Jesus has seen what is going to happen, it has a coordinating power. It will make, it just make things work in the spirit. And we will see it as if it is simple. Whereas, leave it to the world, and you will see catastrophe. You will see chaos. But we come here, you see, when, you know, the apostolic faith church, bless the person that started it, even though she's racing on, in her grave. The people that continue, may God bless them. Amen. You just come, there is, there is a special spirit. Everything can happen and happen and happen and happen and happen. And then it comes the first special. Because God is saying, I'm going to descend. God is giving warning. And then, the Bible reading comes, comes every single spirit. And then when, by the time the last spirit shall come, Satan is out. Amen. There are something, something great is coming. Amen. And then you just feel the so solemnness, Amen. the solemnity, the, 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 the tranquility. Amen. You see God just come down. Wah! And if you are in the spirit of God, you can't miss it. And I'm not going to explain to you the way I feel. Because if you are not like that, then you are not going to feel it. You need to be in the spirit of God and then you feel the presence of the blood of Jesus in you. And then you feel, look, this church is different. And because it's different for a purpose, it's, a diff it's different for salvation, it's different for sanctification, it's different for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it's different in organization. It's hard to be. It has to be. So the, it's the blood of Jesus that coordinates so many things then it, it regulates the acidity of the body and provides oxygen for us to breathe and takes away carbon dioxide and carries the essential minerals. If the blood did not exist in our body, we would not have marrows. But you know, the blood has a way of penetrating the bones and putting marrows in there and making sure that the marrows are lubricating our bones. It's it, and the blood of Jesus does that in, in, in the spiritual sense for us and make sure that we live a very, a very um, peaceful life. Eh? And Hebrews chapter 9. I always read it from verse 13. For if the, the blood of bulls and of goats 
and the ashes of the heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purification, to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, Amen. who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to save the living God? If the blood of goats and bull could do that, how much more the blood of Jesus? It is a matter of surrender. It is a matter of application. Just say the blood of Jesus. You know you can have a dispute with somebody. You can have this agreement. And you just say the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus will touch the other heart. And the blood of Jesus touches your heart. And then you come out. You, you, you'll be looking for him. You'll be looking for her to say, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, what happened there? Ah, oh, it was a mistake. And the blood of Jesus has covered it. And you see yourself embracing each other. And you see yourself hugging each other. And you can see yourself crying. It's not because man can do it. It is the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And that is why we recommend. And that is why we use it. Because nothing else could have prevailed. Nothing else could have done a good job. Nothing else can do it. When God has said, don't drink blood. So would we have had to take it and drink? In order, and then the other, one will, the, other, the other one will drink, and then we can be together. No, but God gives it to us in a measure in the yes. spirit yes. for our own functionality. Yes. And God knows that if we don't have it, we will perish. Yes. So therefore, God makes these available. The blood. See, somebody told me that even if one cell, once one cell in our system misses road, it causes cancer. It, it brings sorrow. It brings pain. It brings all kinds of illnesses. But what did, let's go back to that Hebrew chapter 9 verse 22. And almost all things are, are pushed, uh, and almost all things are by the Lord pushed with blood. Yes. And without shedding of blood is no remission of sin. Yes. Everything in our system is pushed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. It is the, it's, it's, it's the one that Jesus has injected that regulates the system, that gives it the right measure so that we can be protected. One of our reverends told us um, that uh, the arm numbers were attacking, attacking him and he had no other weapon <laughs> than to say the blood of Jesus. And by the time he turned his eyes, they ran. So is it not powerful? Is it not powerful than bullets? Is it not powerful than knives? Is it not powerful than any other weapon? Could you could, they, could the spear have worked for him then? Assuming he had his own and then they wanted to do a, 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 a fracker. It would be a matter of then who, who loses, loses, who wins, wins. But he was the winner. Amen. And one of our other ministers said how Amraba shot him. And he pleaded the blood of Jesus. Amen. The bullet disappeared. Amen. And he said the very Amrabas that shot him came to him Amen. to say, I'm sorry, I was the yes. person. So are you going to tell me that the blood of Jesus is not powerful? Is it, are you going to tell me that I should not use it? I will use it for the rest of my life. And I implore all of you that this is the privilege that God has given to us and has warned us not to joke with it. That, that when he says, eat no blood, it, 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 blood doesn't taste well. It, it, it cannot be food. It cannot replace the meat that we eat. But you know why God just wanted us to know that we should respect it. The, the, the human one, the one that came from the, from the system. But nevertheless, we should trust him that he will do everything for us. And I also read in Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Amen. You see, the blood in the system, 
fight bacteria. So inside us, those who developed missiles for warfare, I remember many years ago, America developed the anti-missile missile. So when the enemy launches their missile, the American missile will open the mouth and swallow the one of the enemy. So in our system, we have anti-missile missiles that God has installed. That the diseases that would have otherwise consumed us is swallowed by the blood. I tell you, when you eat it, you take it out of your system. And then you, become, you, you, you are healthy and you're walking yeah, every year young. Every year, you see every year this. It's the blood of Jesus oh, yeah. that has made that to happen. Oh, yeah. A healthy life is bound to be the source of a healthy life. Oh, yeah. It's through the blood of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Because God has put in, in there the fighting organisms. Oh, yeah. You won't see I don't know whether you know soldier ants. If you know soldier ants, then you will see in, they, they go in straight line like this. And at the edges are soldiers on one side. And then on the left hand side, the, the right hand side soldiers, the left hand side soldiers. And in the middle are the troopers that go to bring sand or food to the mother, wherever the mother is hidden. So in our system, you have the, 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 you, you have the um, antibacterial fighter. You have the anti-missile fighter. You have the anti corona fighter. You have all that you need to live a living life. But if you don't have it, if you don't have the blood of Jesus on you, you are the loser. The blood of Jesus is also the target. There's something in it that is called trigoin. It regulates the speed of the metabolism in every cell. We must have the correct amount. If we have it too low, then we, we become lethargic. If we have it too high, and then we become hyper. And people will say, ah, is that the one that preached the other day? And then, so, but if it is, there is, there is a mechanism within the system that regulates it, that the blood in the system is the same. Or sometimes you hear people have high blood pressure. It's, be, it's the continuous thing that has happened over a period of time. And then the blood becomes shut up. And then it could be it's, it's some, some neglect. But you know, when you have the blood of Jesus, it regulates. It just regulates everything. Everything about you. So you, you become tempered. Everywhere, you still show the same exposition. You know that even in time of rarity, when people wear, it doesn't sound like him. It doesn't look like him. You know that there's something wrong. Yeah. Next day, you, they will see, you, okay, he's in, he's in normal senses now. Yeah. He's, uh, he's in her normal senses now. Yeah. Things have come back to normal. Yeah. It is because the blood of Jesus worked overnight. Yeah. And that is why it is important that we have it. Yeah. The, the, it, is all, it is for the proof. And then someone asked the question, uh, why is blood red? Why is blood red? The blood is red because God wants to use it for our identification. Oh, yeah. Imagine if it was a blue, blo a blue blood or a black blood. Would, uh, would Satan see it from a distance? God wants to give something that Satan will see from a distance. Yeah. You remember the scarlet robe? Yeah. When, they were, when, they, they, when the children of Israel visited Jericho and they saw Rahab and, and they told Rahab, okay, for the kindness you've shown to us, a scarlet robe. Oh, yeah. You put it there. It was for the identification of Rahab. Yeah. We throw her, uh, her, her lineage. We have Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so it's for our own identification. Yeah. When I see the blood, yeah. I will pass over you. Yeah. When I see the blood, yeah. death will pass over you. Yeah. I said, when I see the blood, yeah. um, um, poverty will pass over you. Yeah. I said, when I see the blood, yeah. um, sicknesses will pass over you. Yeah. This is the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And where did God say he gave it to us? He says, I've made it available for you on the altar so that he can make atonement for your sins because it's only the blood that makes atonement for the soul. So the blood of Jesus is available on this altar. I call you to come and pray. Pray the blood of Jesus now and God will bless you today.
Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. Let your blood avail for us today, O oh Lord. Let it wash away every sin and say. Let it take away every sickness and ailment. Let it bring victory. Let your blood bring salvation. Let your blood bring sanctification. By the blood, O oh Lord, baptize us and take all the glory. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen.